not a red carpet, but a rainbow one to welcome gays and lesbians in Uganda. In a few days, they plan to hold a parade here to celebrate diversity in Africa. The carpet isn't quite long enough, so red fabric is added. Such details are the least of the activists' worries. What they're doing could land them in prison under Uganda's anti-gay laws, which are among the toughest in the world. Many are unwilling to appear on camera. I think if they go to news that we're happening here... One man says he thinks the police will stop them if they find out what they're doing. People talk to the media, he says, or post something on Facebook. I've arranged to meet some politicians in the Ugandan capital Kampala. I've promised to mention nothing about the planned gay pride march. Same-sex relationships are illegal in Uganda, punishable with up to 14 years in prison. Parliament has even discussed the possibility of introducing tougher sentences. Some are calling for the death penalty, like lawmaker Christine Abia, one of the major hardliners. Even animals, beasts, have not degenerated that far. How come people with conscience then physiologically disorient themselves and then they call it, uh, we are a certain sexual orientation. No, you have just disoriented yourself. And then you pretend that it's a human right. No, for goodness sake, it's a human wrong. I'm shocked by her stance. Christina Bia is actually known among many Western organizations as an energetic defender of women's rights. But to me, she seems more like a woman from the Middle Ages. The only ultimate thing one could do is just throw them in the water, let them be eaten by good fish. Richard is one of those that Christina Bia would like to turn into fish food. The young Ugandan is helping with preparations for the Gay Pride March. He came out two years ago and is happy to appear on camera. The next day, he even invites me to his home. He's had to move house several times since coming out because he kept receiving threats. Now he's trying to build up a new life in an apartment on the edge of the city. It's been a very big change that happened and um, sometimes feeling uh, what happened uh, I'm not any different but why would people start to like treat me different or start to think I'm indifferent just because they know um, I'm gay so that really like really hurts. Right now he has a friend visiting from France, so he's making coffee, which is unusual in Uganda. Marco, Marco, do you want sugar in your coffee? Yes, please. How many? All right. A typical Ugandan, Richard prefers to drink tea. People just have their habits, and so sometimes it's very difficult to change them. And um, the whole thing drives even to sexuality and um, acceptance. In Uganda, like matters of like sexuality, it's, it's more or less like the topic sex is discussed in closed doors. That's where the distinction comes with the West. Well, you can go and demonstrate on the streets. It's very difficult sometimes to do it here. While his friend Marco drinks his coffee, Richard uses the time to continue preparations for the Gay Pride March. It's set to culminate with a parade on Entebbe Beach, around 40 kilometers from Kampala. Richard is constantly on his smartphone, organizing. I find it amazing that Richard can be so relaxed given the circumstances. He's even happy. You brought the rain. A little while ago, he wouldn't have dared draw attention to himself, let alone go on camera. Two years ago, a well-known pro-gay activist was murdered in Kampala. Earlier this year, Richard had to go underground himself. A newspaper published an article on him, inciting hatred amongst its readers. They stated where I stay, where I studied, where I work. So it was more threatening because with your address pinned out there, you never know what could happen to you. So it was really uh, scary. So at some point I had, I had to move. The tabloid newspapers regularly turn out anti-gay propaganda, 
publishing the private addresses of gays and lesbians. I've arranged to meet a radio presenter named Charles Adongto. He's one of the few journalists who've interviewed a homosexual on his show, a step that caused him a lot of problems. But it turns out he's not actually a defender of homosexual rights. He believes there's another motive behind the gay and lesbian movement. I have seen two or three people who I have stayed with as colleagues, okay, and I knew that they had no problem at all. And then when they left this country, I started hearing stories that I have been hounded out of this country. I think some of us, some Ugandans, use this in order to get a visa to run out of this country. Maybe they think that going to Europe or to the US or to any other country out of this place is a better, provides a better opportunity. Later, I meet up with Richard again at an Indian restaurant, and I tell him about my conversation. He tells me he's fed up with hearing that homosexuals are only looking for financial benefits or asylum abroad. He says that despite all his problems, he's never considered leaving his homeland. This whole concept of saying that uh, we are only looking for money, to me, I would say it's... it's um, it's a form of an excuse. Because even when you look at the churches, like the evangelicals, a lot of money is coming from the West, actually. And this is money that they access that we don't even have access to. And many of those churches are actively preaching against homosexuality. I've arranged to meet with a pastor who often talks to the media about what he sees as the dangers of homosexuality. I meet Pastor Solomon Male in a suburb of Kampala. He's come to comfort the grandparents of a boy who was sexually abused three days ago. He says it's the victims of sexual violence that he's concerned about, whether they're gay or straight. Then he says he wants to show me some of the videos he's filmed, which he uses to speak on homosexuality in schools. But the things he teaches are clearly full of cliches and prejudices. Still, Pastor Male is not someone who incites hatred against homosexuals, nor does he support draconian punishments for lesbians and gays. No one is born gay. No one is born a homosexual. If you learn a practice which hurts your life, and you are warned that, look, these are the consequences, and you still stay focused on indulging in it, then it's your problem. It's now the eve of the Gay Pride March. The organizers and participants are holding a small party at a hotel. Most of them come in traditional dress. They pose for photographs on the rainbow carpet. There are more than 50 languages and ethnic cultures in Uganda. Richard is wearing a robe from his home in eastern Uganda. We thought it wise that uh, as Ugandans we need to appreciate our cultures and different uh, traditions and that's why today everyone is dressed and uh, looking like where they come from and uh, we are hoping this brings us more closer to our families, to our own traditions and cultures. This evening everything is happening in secret. The hotel owner supports the gay and lesbian movement, so the atmosphere is relaxed. But how will it be tomorrow when they take to the streets to demand their rights? The group is meeting at the National Theater. From here, they'll go by bus to Entebbe. The mood is a very different one today from last night. The police have now got wind of their plans, and the group is very nervous. But the bus arrives and everything continues as planned. Only those with an armband are allowed to board for security reasons. But there's still no sign of Richard, and I'm starting to feel worried. The man sitting next to me is also looking increasingly tense. He's already been to prison because of his homosexuality. Yeah, the police guys were like, this guy is gay. So these guys wanted to see how I do it with my fellow men. So they confiscated my clothes and uh, they had to do rough sex with me. When we get to Entebbe, we first have to wait for the other buses to arrive. 
but the group has no problem passing the time. Then, suddenly, Richard turns up. I hardly recognized him at first because of his wig. He tells me he was stopped by the local police chief who warned him that the activists would all be arrested unless they steer clear of any busy streets. I ask him if he had to pay a bribe. No comment, he says. The mood is now more upbeat. That everyone is so free today, everyone is being themselves and waving their flags. Then comes the big moment and my heart is almost in my mouth. The Ugandan Gay Pride March gets underway. They've waited for a long time for this. Last year, the police put a stop to the parade before it really got started. This time, the gays and lesbians are able to march for half an hour along Entebbe Beach undisturbed. They're very relieved and begin to dream of a different Uganda. To have a free and liberated people, LGBTI people, who live in harmony with the rest of the community. I've spent nearly a week with Richard and the others and been impressed by their courage. I've seen problems, but also signs of hope. And who knows, maybe next year they'll be able to take their march from the beach to the center of Kampala.